What you're listening to now is a piece by Brian Eno uh, from his landmark work, Music for Airports. This piece specifically is called One Slash Two, or actually, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what Mr. Eno would have wanted us to call this. He just named it after the side of the record that it was on. Um, But regardless, uh, as you may have noticed by now, if you're particularly astute uh, or familiar with the original, uh, you're not actually listening to Mr. Eno's original cut of this lovely work. Um, And what you're looking at obviously isn't sheet music, it isn't a bunch of tape loops like the original, uh, nor is it an audio recording of the original that I'm just playing back. Uh, What you're looking at right now, as you may have been able to discern, is actually just a bunch of code. Um, But I can assure you that this code is playing, or rather it's generating, uh, one slash two by Brian Eno. That lovely work for piano that you were just hearing. So, how's that happening? Well, I'm I'm going to explain how I managed to rig this up because I think it's pretty neat. First of all, uh, what you're looking at right now is actually a, a program or rather a programming language called Chuck, uh, which is kind of an adaptation of C plus plus for uh, sound synthesis, although today not using it for sound synthesis, using it for one of its secondary functions, which is MIDI, uh, sending MIDI signal. Uh, the program is sending MIDI off screen to Reason. And as you can see, the project file is empty. There's no MIDI data in the project itself. All I've got is a just a piano on one of the presets, uh, ready to receive any MIDI signal that it gets sent its way, and a little bit of reverb. And, crucially, the sustain on this piano is, it's not quite at max, it's at 97%, which I think is the highest you can go, but that's all being triggered from within Chuck. So how does that part work? Well, it's fairly simple. It all comes back to this line of code here, which is essentially just saying, uh, open any MIDI port you can, starting with one, uh, and if it's not open, so if uh, send MIDI.open is false, uh, indicated by that exclamation mark, just exit straight away. But fortunately for us, uh, I've checked, I've installed MIDI port on this computer, and so uh, MIDI port one is being allocated for reason. Uh, That's kind of a boring off-screen thing. just to do with getting your MIDI ports in order. Uh, Nothing particularly revolutionary about that. Um, And kind of above that, you can see just kind of uh, declaring variable names, send MIDI and instance, each of which is basically just declaring that we're going to be sending MIDI messages, uh, each of which is using the same variable name, instance, uh, through the MIDI channel, which is called send MIDI. Uh, all of the signal going through the same channel because we're just sending it to the one piano in in reason. Now to understand this while true loop portion, uh, you really need to understand a little bit about uh, the original and Mr. Eno's process for creating Music for Airports. You see, each piece on Music for Airports isn't composed in a kind of regular fashion uh, with, you know, particular sections of a piece coming after the other. They're all single section pieces, each of which is composed in a generative fashion. And what this means, uh, or what this means specifically in the context of music for airports, uh, is that each piece on the album comprises a series of tape loops that uh, are kind of wound at not quite random, uh, but but at seemingly random uh, lengths so that they do not sync up at all. So essentially you have, depending on the piece, somewhere around 8 or 10 tape loops, each of which has its own 
little pieces of music on it which is spiraling around in a pattern that is so long that would take so long to resolve that it is essentially never going to resolve it is essentially an infinite generative sequence uh, so what's happening in this while true loop here is that uh, when it gets triggered all at once or at the same time there are eight functions that are being sporked so what that means in Chuck is that they're all being triggered concurrently so what that means is that we're not waiting for one function to finish before we move to the next we're just triggering everything at the same time and seeing what happens then so when this while true loop is activated um, and the while true loop here is kind of not really serving much of a purpose it's just you know proving that we are going to have a truly infinite loop uh, it'll take five weeks before we trigger them again what it's essentially doing is just saying you know make sure all these functions are called at the same time and for the next five weeks just let them do what they do um, and so as mentioned before each of the original tape loops in Eno's composition take what is essentially a random time to complete so that is reflected in the way that each of these functions is written uh, taking loop one as an example which is quite simple uh, it's really just playing a signal note uh, 72 uh, which for those of you who know a little bit about MIDI uh, means that we're playing C5 so an octave above middle C every every 17 or so seconds so how this function works is that the moment it gets triggered calls another function randomizer here which returns a number between uh, 0.97 and 1.03 and it says that number of seconds is going to be the randomly generated duration multiplier that we're going to be using for this particular function call what it then does is it waits 11.7 seconds multiplied by the duration multiplier then it triggers or rather it calls a function called trigger uh, before again waiting 5.4 times duration multiplier before starting again so what happens in the function trigger is essentially where the the uh, MIDI triggering section of this uh, program occurs so it takes two arguments the function, uh, one of which is just the note number. So in this case, in loop one, we're being we're, we're telling it to trigger C five, so seventy two, and another integer which is called strength, which you'll see what it does later. So the first line of code here is just telling it uh, that the MIDI note is on so it's switching it. it it's really kind of obscured what it's actually doing here because uh, uh, the, the way MIDI is set up at a machine language level is really kind of obtuse but what 144 means is essentially it's giving it a boolean value of 1 um, as strange as that sounds and later in the code 128 is really standing in for a boolean value of 0 so it's saying boolean of 1 so MIDI is on. So we are deviating from the norm of having no notes playing and we're saying we're going to have a note here. Then what it does is for the second parameter of the MIDI data, which is which note we're referring to, it takes the first argument of the function call and sends that to data2. So it says 72, we're going to be triggering a note with the identity of 72 so c5 and then it takes a look at the second argument the uh, the strength so if it is a strength of one which if I remember correctly loop one our sole note in loop one is of strength one and triggers uh, it says that it's going to set the velocity so anywhere between 1 and 127 of this particular note instance is somewhere between 80 and 100 and then once it's figured out which it's going to use uh, which velocity it's going to uh, decide upon for this particular note 
it waits a millisecond and then says off. So back to that Boolean value of zero. So, you know, immediately turning it off. Um, and we can see just in those lines of code there, which is the same thing, just clarifying that we're gonna send the message that we've created. So we're creating a MIDI message with three parameters. So on, note value, velocity, and then we're sending it. And then we're saying, okay, change the, the Boolean value of whether the note is gonna be on or off to make it off and then send exactly the same message again. So terminating the same note a millisecond after it began. So this leads us to one of the wonderful things that Mr. Eno did for us in making this piece uh, in the way that he made it rather easy uh, to write MIDI code for this piece because unlike really the vast majority of works written for piano on this little number the sustain pedal is down for the entirety so the length of each note instance doesn't really matter um, you can kind of hear what i'm talking about if i set the sustain down to zero and then we trigger this again we get that sound of notes being pulled off as soon as they're being put on uh, but because this is an ambient work, uh, because essentially we want that sustained reverb out effect. Sustain is on max for the entirety of the piece. So we don't have to worry about MIDI note collisions. So it makes a lot more sense if we treat each MIDI note instance like a point in time rather than a stretch of time. Because that way we don't have to worry about within these series of loops any of any two instances of the same note being triggered at the same time uh, unless they're being triggered within a millisecond of another which is frankly so unlikely we really don't need to worry about it so really that's kind of the the basic principle beh behind how this piece works that's kind of the coding aspects of this this piece taken care of uh, which really is most of what there is to say. The rest is quite boring, uh, really, uh, because the loops are all freely available online, so there's no issues in figuring out how to, you know, what loops were being used by, you know, himself. Uh, I'll put a link to all of the loops where you can download them, uh, just MP3 files, uh, none of this code in the description and I'll also link just a github link to this code itself if you want to try it out um, do be wary of that um that uh, third line of code there uh, if you don't have MIDI port installed it won't work and you also might need to be careful of which MIDI port you're sending to if you haven't specified it I suppose there's nothing more to do other than to take us out in another wonderful rendition of uh, procedurally procedurally generated uh, one slash two by Brian Eno as performed by Chuck in MIDI. Mm -hmm.